What is up guys? How's it going? Back at it again with another video. So this one is going to be a little bit not eventful. This is more going to be a explanation type video. And so if you're not really into that or it doesn't really interest you, then just go ahead and uh, sit this one out. But I have some things to go over. There's a pretty decent change coming to my computer setup and I felt like I needed to make a video on it. So as you can see right in front of you, this is my late 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. Retina display. I've had this thing for the past five years. I purchased it on April 1st, 2014, and it's been a pretty decent machine for the past five years. Now, with that said, it is a base model, uh, 2 gigahertz with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, or at least that's that's the configuration I purchased it in. And so, I will save you kind of the backstory on how I got it and stuff uh, for another time. But basically, uh, what you need to know is I used it for about two and a half years as my main computer, and it worked just fine. Uh, however, I decided that the 8 gigs of RAM was going to be a concern in the future, and so I decided to go ahead and just swap it out. I wasn't really confident that 8 gigs was going to be enough for me in the future, and so what I did was I went to Best Buy and I purchased a mid-2015 MacBook Pro, uh, also a base model, so it still had the integrated GPU, but it had two, would it, sorry, but it had 16 gigabytes of RAM, and so that was something that I felt comfortable with. Now I used that for a little over a year until I decided to upgrade yet again. I went ahead and got a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is the one you see here. I bought that in May of 2018, and I've been using it up until this point. So, obviously, you guys know the history or the kind of media coverage with these machines, but basically there are two glaring flaws with this computer in terms of design, and that would be the keyboard and the whole Flexgate thing, which I will... Uh, explain in a second, but basically with the keyboard. It's been well documented I'm not going to go over basically what the issue is very much, but uh, people are having issues with the keys sticking and double typing and such uh, due to the design so I haven't I've been pretty lucky up until this point now, recently a couple of weeks ago I've started to notice that my N key if I type once, sometimes it'll type two or three N's in a row, and that's pretty annoying, but that is the first actual issue I've had with the keyboard. The second thing that had me concerned was the Flexgate thing. Now, if you don't know what that is, basically the data cable for the display is a little bit too short, and when you move the hinge and stuff, it will go ahead and flex that cable and kind of tug on it because they wrapped it around the display controller board and basically it's just too short and it stretches the cable over time and it will fail. Now this is these two things are pretty much guaranteed to happen as far as I know at some point and so even though I have Apple Care on this machine and I wouldn't be out any money if I had those issues it's still the time and the hassle of having to deal with it and so I've decided that I'm going to ditch this computer until Apple gets their crap together and go back to the 2013. It's pretty, pretty that, it's really that simple. And so, now you might be wondering, didn't I just say that 8 gigs of RAM wasn't going to be enough for the future? And yeah, of course I did. So, what I did is I went on eBay and I purchased a dedicated GPU high-end logic board for it and I also purchased an SSD. And so, this is these are the old parts but it'll help as a visual aid so this is the original logic board out of the machine I've already carried out the swap which is why I'm doing this and so yeah I bought a DGPU logic board of course it has an NVIDIA GT 750M right here on the other one and I also purchased a 512 gig SSD this is the original 256 out of it so I needed as much focus as I could possibly get to carry that out which is why I didn't make a video detailing the process but uh, I'll go ahead and throw some pictures up at this point to kind of help as a visual aid with it but uh, it was pretty simple to do it was tedious I'm not gonna lie but I had an iFixit guide I had the proper tools and it took me about an hour an hour and a half to carry it out and so there you go. So basically what this means is this is now a high-end MacBook Pro with a dedicated GPU and 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. So it's pretty much maxed out. The only other option you had besides this was a 2.6 Core i7, but otherwise everything else would have been the same. So there you go. Uh, of course, you can see I purchased a new D-Brand skin for it. 
course, I had to have that. I originally had one on here, but I had removed it because my friend Chris had this machine for about a year. And it's a long story, but basically, I had to get a new one. So there you go. That's my trademark blue carbon fiber skin. Makes it my computer again, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and open it up. I will go ahead and log in here. So there you go. I decided to save the boot up because it's really not relevant to what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, there you go. So as you can see, after I carried out the board swap, I made sure everything was fully functional. And so it is, obviously. I uh, double checked everything that I did. And yeah, that was a successful swap. So there you go. I'll go ahead and pull up the spec sheet real quick. Of course, uh, well, it's not going to show the graphics card because it's on battery power, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So there you go. As you can see, we now have a 2.3 gigahertz Core i7. That would be the 4850HQ. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and we also have the 512 gigabyte SSD, which as you can see, I definitely need because I'm using a lot of space. And uh, yeah, it would show the graphics card, but it's on battery power, so I'm going to go ahead and have to do this real quick. And boom, there you go. So there is the GT750M. It's a two gigabyte graphics card. Of course, um, the reason I decided to do this was not only because of the keyboard. Well, it pretty much was that. But basically what I want to get to is, is that this machine at a basic level is pretty much... Uh, the same as far as platform goes as a mid 2015 and so I'm pretty confident that I can use this machine for another couple of years at least at that point it'll be seven years old but again the the platform the Haswell platform is the same as the mid 2015s are and so they're really I don't really think there's a huge performance gap between those machines so yeah I think I'll be able to use this for a decent amount of time at least until Apple gets their crap together and uh yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say with the computer standing here. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the setup, and I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so here we are. MacBook Pro is back in its former glory in my main computer setup here. And, uh, yeah, it was actually pretty painless to get this thing back going into this setup again. Of course, you all may know that I had a Belkin Thunderbolt 3 dock, and all I had to do to make that work with this machine was I just had to get a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter dongle and a short Thunderbolt 2 cable. I literally plugged it in and everything worked. I couldn't ask for a better backwards compatibility on Belkin's part. I didn't have to do any sort of configuring. I just plugged everything in and it worked. It works perfectly. Got two displays, keyboard, mouse, a DAC for my headphones, a bunch of USB devices, and it all just works. So that's really good. I was uh, actually kind of concerned about that before doing this, but obviously it worked out. So now, as you can see, if I go into the spec sheet, now you can see the graphics card is showing up. So there you go. Another thing that satisfies my OCD is if we go ahead and go into coconut battery here, you can see the manufacturer date of the, well, the logic board in this case. Uh, this logic board that I put in here is only about two weeks older than the original one. The original one was manufactured February 24th, 2014, and this one's February 3rd. So that is uh, pretty satisfying that uh, it didn't really change the age of the uh, logic board all that much. As far as the battery goes, we have 158 cycles. Most of those were put on by Chris. I believe before I got rid of this machine, it only had about 40 on it. And uh, yeah, we're still at 92% capacity, which is decent for a five-year-old battery. And as long as it still lasts me three or four hours, that's perfect. So there you go. That's pretty much it. Don't really have too much else to say. Of course, I will have to pick up another uh, MagSafe 2 adapter at some point just so I don't have to keep ripping this one out when I want to go somewhere, but that's a small issue. So as you can see, it's back at it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the explanation on what's going on with my MacBook Pro situation. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one.